Hello, everyone. I'm Rong Tao Jiang from Yale School of Medicine. The topic of my presentation is associations of physical frailty with health outcomes and brain structure. Frailty is a clinical state of high vulnerability to stressors due to deterioration in functional reserve across various physiological systems. The most common frailty phenotype defines frailty severity as the number of five criteria met, including slow walking speed, weight loss, weakness, exhaustion, and physical inactivity. Being frail is common in older adults and places individuals at a greater risk of adverse outcomes. Despite the clinical and public health implications of frailty, how frailty affects and is affected by many other factors, including mental health and brain structure, remains underexplored. Several limitations need to be addressed. First, previous lecture on frailty has been primarily interested in investigating its correlations with aspects of physiological capabilities and morbidities, leaving its association with many other health-related outcomes largely unexplored. Second, given that most evidence is cross-sectional, the directionality of the association between frailty and health outcomes is unclear. Third, only a few small studies have examined the neurobiological underpinnings of physical frailty with conflicting findings. Mm -hmm. A possible reason is the use of small samples with low statistical power. To address these limitations, using data from the UK Biobank, this study aims to investigate the association of physical frailty with a comprehensive set of health outcomes and neuroimaging data. Specifically, we first examine the pattern and the direction of the association between frailty and the many health-related outcomes. We further examine the association of frailty with the brain structure and its role in mediating the relationship between frailty and the health outcomes. Using UK Biobank data, physical frailty was operationalized by the five criteria, including weight loss exhaustion, weakness, physical inactivity, and slow walking speed. The number of criteria met indicated frailty severity, resulting in a score ranging from 0 to 5. We identified a total of 325 health-related outcomes from UK Biobank, which can be grouped into seven categories, including cognitive functioning, lifestyle factors, early life risk, physical measures, mental health, biochemistry markers, and environment factors. Overall, the number of participants with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 frailty indicators at the baseline, as well as at the 9-year follow-up, is shown in the pie chart. We used the linear mixed effect models to investigate how the severity of frailty relates to each of the 325 health measures while controlling for confounders, including age, gender, education level, material deprivation, BMI, ethnicity, and waist to hip ratio. And the results found that 283 out of 325 health related measures had significant associations with physical frailty while controlling for confounders. All associations were in the expected direction, with the severity of frailty being related to worse cognitive performance, increased early life risk, and healthy lifestyle, poor physical fitness, increased symptoms of mental health, severe environmental pollution, and adverse biochemical markers. In particular, Larger effect sizes were seen for the associations with mental health than for other categories. This slide shows the top 10 health measures exhibiting the most significant associations with frailty, and notably 
seven out of these ten measures belong to mental health. The subgroup analysis yielded nearly identical findings to the main results, with the pattern of association being highly correlated between middle-aged people and older adults. An exception is the mental health measures, for which middle-aged people show more significant associations than their older counterparts. The independent association of each individual fraud indicator with health-related outcomes was investigated by including mutual adjustment of the other four indicators of frailty, and we found that each indicator showed independent associations with most health measures, with exhaustion and slow walking speed being the most significant indicators, and weight loss being the least significant one. The longitudinal analysis suggests that frailty at the baseline significantly predicted 70 out of 152 health-related outcomes at a nine-year follow-up after controlling four confounders, and we found the largest proportion of significant associations um, was for mental health. On the other hand, the reverse association that is the association between baseline health measures and the follow-up of frailty, reached a significance for 85 measures, and the highest significance rate was again observed for mental health. This results suggest that a bidirectional relationship may exist between frailty and adverse health outcomes, especially those relating to mental health. We found widespread associations between physical frailty and regional green matter volume. Of all 139 brain regions, the severity of frailty was significantly and negatively related to green matter volume in 75 brain regions. The strongest effects were observed in subcortical regions. Moreover, each of the top 10 frailty-related health measures also exhibited widespread associations with regional green matter volume across the whole brain, although the number of brain regions for which these associations reached the significance varied. Moreover, the association map of frailty was significantly similar to each of the top 10 frailty correlated health measures. This results suggest that frailty and these health outcomes may have shared neural biological correlates. Given the significant association between frailty, brain structure, and health-related outcomes, we used the mediation analysis to establish how much of the relationship between frailty and each of the health outcomes can be explained by brain structure. And we found that the mean green matter volume significantly and partially mediated the effect of frailty on all 10 frailty-correlated health outcomes, or the effect of health outcomes on frailty. These results suggest that the relationship between physical frailty and multiple health-related outcomes can be explained by individual differences in brain structure. Overall, the main results of this study can be summarized as follows. First, frailty was associated with a diverse set of unfavorable outcomes with the most substantial effects observed for mental health and middle-aged adults. This finding highlights the importance of physical frailty and suggests that routine frailty assessment should include middle-aged adults. Second, the longitudinal analysis indicates a significant bidirectional relationship between frailty and health outcomes, with the strongest effects observed for mental health. Given the limited effectiveness of current pharma pharmacological therapy, interventions on frailty may help improve mental health. Third, the brain structure partially mediates the re uh, the brain structure partially mediates the association between frailty and health-related measures, raising a possibility of a neurobiological basis. 
I would like to express my gratitude to all co-authors of this study, as well as my colleagues at Yale School of Medicine. Thanks for your listening.